There are two different methods for seaming commercial linoleum flooring. One method, heat welding, which will be addressed in this video, helps create an aseptic environment as well as provides for different visual designs. The second method, S761 seam adhesive, used for non-aseptic areas, will be shown in another video. Heat welding is a skill that requires knowledge of both the necessary equipment and the procedure. The equipment consists of an electric groover, a heat welding gun, a roller nozzle or a narrow tip speed nozzle, a recessed scriber, a hand groover, skiving knives, and a skiving plate. The first step would be to install your first piece of linoleum and to prepare the seam edge we're going to take three quarters of an inch to an inch off of the factory edge with a nice straight square cut. This provides for a much stronger seam. We're going to install the second piece of linoleum with an overlap of approximately three quarters of an inch to an inch. Using the proper linoleum adhesive, we're going to spread the adhesive with the proper notch trowel and provide the proper open time for the adhesive. Place the material into the adhesive, being sure not to exceed the working time of the adhesive. Once the material is placed into the adhesive, roll the material in both directions with a 100 pound roller. Roll both pieces of material up to the seam edge, being careful not to roll over top of the seam edge. After thoroughly rolling the material, using your recessed scriber, scribe and cut the seam, leaving approximately a 64th inch gap in the seam. This will make it easier to groove the seam. Once the seam is cut, re-roll with a 100 pound roller. It is important to wait a minimum of 10 hours for the adhesive to dry prior to heat welding. Complete the heat welding within 24 hours of the installation. Practice on a piece of scrap material with the correct nozzle to determine the correct setting and welding speed. Router groove the seams of 2.0 millimeter or 2.5 millimeter gauge linoleum down to the jute backing. On 3.2 millimeter, router groove the seams to a depth of approximately two-thirds the thickness of the material. Use an electric router equipped with a 3.5 millimeter thick blade. In areas where an electric router cannot be used, use a hand router. Routed seam should be free of dirt, adhesive, and particles produced by routing. In most cases, you will not be able to weld the entire seam in one weld. You will need to create a splice. In order to do this, cut a piece of weld rod long enough to weld the entire seam. Cut this piece of weld rod into two pieces, one long enough to weld approximately three quarters of the seam and the remaining piece to weld the rest of the seam. Preheat the welding gun to 400 to 450 degrees centigrade for several minutes before starting the weld. Once the welding gun is up to temperature, apply your nozzle and it is a good idea to do a practice weld prior to welding the seam. Feed the welding rod through the welding tip and apply the welding rod into the routed seam. Adjust your speed so a ridge forms at both sides of the welding rod. Be careful not to burn or char the surface of the floor. Pull the heat gun slowly toward yourself keeping the bottom of the nozzle parallel to the floor. Once the first part of the seam is welded, you will need to change directions. Make a ramp by skiving the weld rod one to two inches from the end of the welded seam. Hand groove the skived section of the weld rod. From the opposite direction, continue welding up the ramp and overlap the initial weld for several inches, creating a splice. Skiving the weld rod should be done in two passes to minimize concave seams. For the first pass, use a skiving knife and a trim plate skiving away the top part of the weld rod while it is still warm. After the welding rod has cooled to room temperature, skive the remaining weld rod on the second pass by holding the skiving knife flush with the floor. Smooth continuous passes result in a smooth seam. Repeated start and stop action results in rough seams. After the final skive, wipe the seam with a clean damp cloth. In this picture you'll see two seams. One seam is properly cut and grooved. The other seam is improperly prepared by just leaving a gap in the seam. The importance of this picture is to show you the result of properly doing a seam versus improperly doing a seam. Here in this cross section, 
you'll see on the left side of the picture a properly welded seam. You'll notice the weld rod is welded in the entire groove. Where on the right side, on the improperly prepared seam, you can see a gap underneath the weld rod. This gap can result in a failed seam. The picture you see here is a failed welded seam due to improperly cutting and grooving the seam. When correctly done, heat welding provides the following benefits. It creates an aseptic seam, it allows for heavy traffic, and it allows for unique visual designs with complementary or contrasting colorations. Be sure to follow all installation instructions when heat welding, and visit armstrong.com for more information.